I'm a treasure hunter. That means I spend my time trying to solve historical mysteries by digging up artifacts, oftentimes from the bottoms of bodies of water. I either tag along with other archaeologists and divers on their missions, or I put them together myself. Now, last summer, I had the joy of joining an archaeologist from Texas State University named Fritz Hatzelman. Fritz found a ship in Panama that may have belonged to the pirate Captain Morgan, the guy with the rum. <laughs> On board were more than 80 treasure chests. In case you're wondering, this is what a 350-year-old treasure chest looks like. And this is what a 350-year-old barrel looks like. Really cool. Now, last year, I also joined another guy, a filmmaker named Ryan Katzenbach. And we found a gun in a canal in Amityville, New York, that he thinks may be the long-missing second murder weapon in the 1970s Amityville horror murders. This thing. Really cool stuff. So anyway, now I'm working on my own dive, sort of my pet project. I've been working on this thing for the past couple of years. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but beginning in 1942, pinball machines were illegal in New York City. Really crazy. So, the logic, the reasoning, was that they were a game of chance and not skill, and thus gambling. They're also viewed as a mob racket and just this morally corrupting, evil, almost satanic influence that would destroy children's minds. It was a really just kind of crazy moral crisis. And there was no greater threat to pinball machines than Mayor LaGuardia. That's actually LaGuardia himself pushing over machines after a raid. <laughs> LaGuardia hated pinball. He hated it more than anything. It's really non-exaggeration to say that one of the top priorities of LaGuardia's entire administration was rounding up pinball machines and arresting their owners. He dreamed of a pinball-free New York City. So under LaGuardia's watch, the NYPD had squads, pinball squads, dedicated to sweeping through the mob dens, smashing machines in a series of prohibition-style raids. You could replace one of these machines with an oak whiskey barrel, and you'd have a scene from Boardwalk Empire or The Untouchables. LaGuardia hated pinball machines. Just six weeks after Pearl Harbor, he walks into the office of the police commissioner, and he tells them the number one priority for all available officers in New York City be to round up machines and arrest their owner. Within one day of the ban, NYPD confiscates more than 2,300 pinball machines and issues more than 1,000 court summons. This is a game. So anyway, what did they do with these machines? Well, through the 1930s, when the first anti-pinball laws started to trickle through City Hall, this is what they do. They take them along with all the other mob loot. We're talking slot machines, brass knuckles, shotguns, knives, counterfeit subway slugs. They take them all, they put them onto a barge, they go, they leave from Lower Manhattan, they go about 40 miles up Long Island Sound, just about two miles from Eden's Neck Lighthouse, and they dump them. To this day, Long Island Sound is home to this massive stash of mob loot, including hundreds, if not thousands, of pinball machines. Now, on one of these dumps, the police commissioner turns to a reporter on the barge, and he tells him, if anybody wants to go dig this stuff up now, they're welcome to. Eighty years later, that's what I intend to do. <laughs> For the past three years, I've been working with a treasure diver named Bill Pfeiffer, this guy. And we've been taking all available pieces of evidence we can find in order to pinpoint exactly where these machines were dumped. And we think we know where they are. Just the other week, we did a survey and recon, dump, uh, survey and recon mission where we went into some underwater photography in order to kind of see what the lay of the land was so we can prepare for the next step, which is to put a guy in the water and do an exploratory dive and dig. Our goal is to find these machines. Now, why? Why are we spending so much time and, and effort searching for something that is quite literally trash? These were thrown away. Well, here's the deal. History has become stagnant. People have this assumption, they take it for granted, that anything that can be discovered can be, anything that can be discovered has been discovered, anything that can be asked has been asked, any questions that are out there, somebody's working on them. And that's simply not the case. You see, history is all about decisions. It's about one person, perhaps a historian, deciding that one thing is worth asking over another, that one thing is worth teaching over another, that one thing is worth discussing over another. And those decisions, a dirty little secret, they're all arbitrary. And so by looking for these machines, you see, I don't have a history PhD. I'm not even a very good diver. But by looking for these machines, I am telling the world that this happened and that it shouldn't be forgotten. You see, this was a really major part of American history, of New York history. 
pinball machines were illegal in New York from 1942 until 1976. Alcohol prohibition lasted about a decade. Pinball prohibition <laughs> lasted 34 years. And the chances are that until this moment, you had no idea. So here's the deal. It's time to reclaim history. It's time to go out there and be a gonzo historian, to go look for some historical mystery, to ask some historical question, perhaps one that nobody has even thought to ask. I promise you won't have to look very hard. And then try, try to find the answer. Go digging for answers. And then let the world know what you find. Thank you. <laughs>